We continue Unit 11, Solving Square Root Equations, with Flap 3 in our foldable. To solve a square root equation, we isolate the square root and square both sides. We also check for extraneous solutions by plugging in the answer to see if we get a true statement. Let's look at example 1. Example 1. We need to isolate the radical first. First we isolate the radical. Moving negative 5 to the other side gives us 8 equals the square root of x minus 4. Since the radical is now isolated, we square both sides to get 64 equals x minus 4. Now we have to solve for x. We get x equals 68. Now we need to check. This does check. It is a true statement. So 68 is our answer. Example 2. We need to isolate the radical first. By moving 1 to the other side, we end up with 32 equals 8 times the square root of 4 minus 3x. Notice I still have an 8 in front, so I have to divide both sides by 8. This gives us 4 equals the square root of 4 minus 3x. Now the radical is isolated. We square both sides to get 16 equals 4 minus 3x, and now we solve for the variable x. So x is equal to negative 4. Our last step is to check the answer to see if it is true. Plugging in negative 4 into the original equation gives us 31 equals to 31. So negative 4 is our answer. Example 3. Notice there is a radical on each side of the equal sign. It is considered isolated, so we go to step 2. In step 2, we square both sides. At this point, we have a linear equation and we solve for the variable. This is x equals 6. We check the answer to see if we get a true statement by plugging into the original equation and we get the square root of 9 equals the square root of 9. This is a true statement. Therefore, x equals 6 is my answer. Look at example 4. This is the same type of problem as example 3. There's a radical on each side of the equal sign, so it is considered already isolated. So now we just need to square both sides. Squaring both sides gives us 16 minus 2x equals x plus 4. Now we have a linear equation and we just solve for x. x equals 4. Now we just need to plug 4 into the original equation to see if that's a true statement. Plugging 4 back into the original equation gives us a true statement. Therefore, x equals 4 is our answer. Example 5, r equals the square root of 10r. We need to isolate the radical first. Notice the radical already is on one side of the equation. So we square both sides, giving us r squared equals 10r. Now we need to solve for r. Remember, when we have a quadratic, we want to move everything to one side of the equation and set it equal to 0. So move 10r to the other side, set it equal to 0. Now we factor out the greatest common factor, r, leaving us r times r minus 10 equals 0. Set each piece equal to 0 and solve for r. r minus 10 is equal to 0, 
So we have r equals 10. r equals 0 is already done. Now we need to check our equation. When we plug 0 back into the original equation, 0 equals to 0 checks. So 0 is an answer. Now we plug 10 back into the original equation. And that also checks. 10 is equal to the square root of 100. Therefore, r equals 10 is an answer. Look at example 6. The radical is isolated, so that step is complete. Now we square both sides to get 5x minus 6 equals x squared. Solve for x. Bring all the variables and numbers to one side and set it equal to 0. Now we need to factor our quadratic equation. So going back to unit 5, factoring, we need to find a target product, target sum. My target product is 6. My target sum is negative 5. The two numbers that multiply together to give me 6 but combine to give me negative 5 are negative 2 and negative 3. Those go in my parentheses. And I set it equal to 0. Now I set each factor to 0 and solve for x. So x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 3. Now we need to check our problem. When I plug in 2, I get a true statement. Therefore, x is equal to 2. Now we plug in 3. I get a true answer with 3 as well. Therefore, 3 is also an answer. Look at example 7. A first step is to isolate the radical, but it is already done. So we square both sides. Giving us negative 7x minus 12 equals x squared. Move everything to one side and set it equal to 0. I get 0 equals x squared plus 7x plus 12. I need to find the two factors that multiply together to give me this quadratic. I get the target product to be 12, the target sum to be 7. The two numbers that multiply together to give me 12 but combine to give me 7 are 4 and 3. Put those in parentheses and solve for x. We get x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 3. Now we need to check. Plugging negative 4 back into the original equation gives me 4 equals to negative 4. That is a false statement. Therefore, negative 4 is not a solution. Plugging negative 3 into the original equation results in a non-true statement. 3 is not equal to negative 3. Neither number is a solution. There is no solution to this problem.